Welcome to the Status Report highlight for the 23rd of October, 2018. And today we're going to talk about the beta updates and our road towards the end of this year. Peter is explaining the current state of base building, and Adam discusses the new in-game map, which will support you on your travels. And I have come down with a cold. So let's kick things off with brand manager Martin. What does reaching beta mean for DayZ? Before we dive into the specifics of the DayZ beta update, let's set the terms straight first. In software or game development, beta is widely regarded as a product that's feature complete. For the DayZ PC beta, this is true in a sense that the beta will have all the features required for its core gameplay loop to work. But within the overall scope of DayZ project, it's certainly not what we would consider a total feature complete game. Then, the beta stage of development is a point from which the focus of development shifts to bug fixing and polishing instead of implementing new features and technology. This will be especially important for DayZ, as one of the main goals for the beta updates is to start making the game into a stable platform that's ready for further development. The other main goal of the update is to make the vanilla game an enjoyable experience. After years spent on core technology development, we finally have a game in our hands, not a game concept. The game has a given set of features and content, and that will allow us to make the necessary balancing and polishing together with our community. Most of this will be happening throughout the rest of 2018, culminating in a 1.0 release where we leave early access. But even after this milestone is achieved, meaning we finally close the core development of the game, we're going to keep improving the platform before new things start making their way into the game again. So to summarize, the PC beta update is going to be a version of the game that has all the basic fun elements of DayZ available, and it's also the start of a journey towards a balanced, stable platform that's ready to support further development and modding. So, at the end, this is where we've arrived at for the Daisy Beta features and content, ultimately meaning that this will also be our 1.0 release after the polishing phase. Please note, the overview is not extensive and does not cover every single small feature or item in the game. Daisy is a pretty complex game after all. This mostly describes things that the beta has in addition to the 0.63 experimental release. Critical new beta features not available in legacy versions of DayZ. Base building, related crafting items and their economy setup, precise placement of objects, electricity system, locking other players from accessing your base, new implementation of vehicles, improved controls, physics and network synchronization, improved damage system, Improvements in vehicle interactions, management and maintenance. Modding support. Implementation of the Steam Workshop. Game launcher. Specific modding tools. Server files for hosting community servers. New player character features. Visualization of bleeding source. Character lifespan. Growing beards and learning soft skills. Character restraining and hit reactions. Smaller new beta features and improvements not available in 0.62. Major improvements of the sound design, hidden loot stashes, not losing your weapon double carrying when switching from hand slot to shoulders, improved in-game map implementation, dynamic spawning of loot, fruits, stones, mushroom and other items, specific animations for carrying using most items, melee attacks with guns, server browser improvements, central economy improvements and more. Features and improvements planned for Beta 1.0 or originally in 0.62 but moved post 1.0. Helicopters. We've arrived at a decision that base building implementation will provide enough of an end goal for players, so helicopters can be added later on. Hopefully not too late. Climbing over obstacles. This feature required additional programming and animation support that we've decided to invest more effectively into other parts of the game. Throwing items. Throwing requires a lot of additional specialist work on physics and network synchronization, and we'd rather invest that time into vehicles and other features. This includes throwable weapons like grenades or smoke grenades. Bows. The implementation of bows means an introduction of a completely new weapon type on 0.63 and was always a risky goal. In the end, unfortunately not achievable in 2018. We've invested the programming time into gunplay, melee combat, vehicles, and other core features that were more important. Ain't nothing more important than my recurve bow boys. Character and infected ragdoll. Unfortunately, there are many network synchronization cases that we need to resolve and implementing ragdolls in combination with deaf animations will require more time and resources. Two-way doors. While a huge quality of life improvement, changing the doors to two-way opening will require additional rework of some of the assets and it is not achievable in 2018. And this last one is a little bit shit for me personally, fishing and fish traps. I love myself some fishing, decaying bodies, carrying characters, 
contaminated areas, item coloring, etc. These are considered flavor features and for now, work on core gameplay features was prioritized instead. I want to get on a personal level with you guys on this feature list that won't make it until post 1.0. Helicopters, I think that needs to come pretty quick. A lot of people are excited for that. Climbing over obstacles, again, another thing that people got super hyped for and want that sooner than later. But of course, if these things had to be postponed due to more important features or technology to make the game run smoother uh, before these are implemented, then fair enough. Throwing items, not too bothered about, though grenades are pretty good to throw. Bows, I, I really want my bow. I, I really love using a bow to hunt character and infected ragdoll ragdolls are good but we can deal with the animation we've got currently two-way doors again the same as the ragdoll probably deal with the doors as we have done for so long already fishing fish traps decaying bodies not too bad but i do like fishing fishing in daisy is one of my favorite pastimes when i'm not killing people i like to fish and survive off the land and cook but we'll have to wait and see how long it takes to get implemented let me know in the comments below which one of these you're most looking forward to as we carry on with the status report Martin follows by saying, in recap, there are no major feature cuts or postponements. Nice. So we should see everything we know of. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Anything that makes DayZ the game unique and original among other survival games is still there. Some of the biggest trade-offs are probably bows, throwing, ragdolls, and some of the flavor features that you were already used to seeing in legacy versions of DayZ. Oh, my voice. Spending extra time on the core features is certainly more beneficial for the future of DayZ. In addition to those features, we've had to do some trimming to the content. Specifically, we've only going to have two types of vehicles available in beta, the V3S truck and the Lada 4x4. As for weapons, compared to our original goals for beta, we're not going to be able to implement the following content in time. Magnum, you son of a Red 9, IZH-43 shotgun, SKS, CR-527, Winchester 70, any other firearm it currently available in 6.2, but not on the 0.63 stress test branch. In general, we've done our best to have each firearm type from 0.62 represented in the game, and additional variety in firearms will be provided with content updates after 1.0, where we should have more animation resources available at hand. Road to 1.0 release. In general, polishing the package of content and features as described above will be our goal for 1.0 and for the weeks immediately after 1.0. This will include general balancing of each part of the game, central economy, weapon damage, etc., a massive amount of bug fixing, polishing and improving the general feeling you as players have when playing DayZ. Just to assure everyone again, both the beta and 1.0 release will happen this year. All of that will be done together with our community, and we will be expected to hear a lot of feedback on various things. Oh, you will! When the beta update gets released, we'll be providing more details on how we will be collecting and evaluating feedback. So this is going to be a long status report highlight as it is. Uh, there's a lot of information here that must be covered. A little bit controversial, I guess you could say, in the ways of Daisy's release, 1.0 beta. A lot of the content the community has been expecting for beta slash 1.0 is being pushed back after 1.0's release. So it's a bit of a bummer. I completely understand frustrations that will happen. Feel free to discuss this in the comments below. Air your concerns, but try to be constructive and don't do personal attacks on people. It's not their fault, it's just the way development is. I'm bummed, I want my 357, my fishing, and more vehicles, but uh, we're just I'm just going to have to wait, and that's just how it is at the minute. It's really hard for me to read and say to you guys, but that's just the way the cookie has crumbled. With that said though, we will still get modding tools and the workshop, so there will be plenty of mods to keep us company, maps, weapons, and uh, episode 2 of Amazing DayZ mods will be coming out this week. I have some very interesting stuff, some again that you might already know of, but a lot of you hopefully don't. So keep your eye out for that video in the next few days. And now let's move on to lead designer Peter, who's going to cover some concerns we had regarding base building, and you can lock the gates, which is great. Let's see what Peter has to say. The process of building these objects is identical and starts with a construction kit, which is placed to outline the position and layout of objects. From there, you're able to add building materials such as logs, planks, nails, or metal sheets and by using the proper tool and user action. You turn them into actual parts of fences or watchtowers. Similarly to the watchtower with its multiple floors, the fence includes an optional platform. Upgrades for both are available in terms of camouflage and passive defense. And of course, you may have already seen some base building examples in my previous video. Peter continues by saying, moreover, a fence can be turned into a gate as there has to be some way to get in or out. 
The opening is wide enough for a truck as well. The gate can be kept closed from unwanted visitors by utilizing a multi-dial combination lock with easily shareable custom codes. Of course, the code can be cracked by brute force and, as everything in DayZ, it can be broken with a proper tool. Although, you should consider the time needed for such actions. That goes for dismantling actions as well. So Peter's saying basically is if you're trying to dismantle a lock to a base, you're going to be very vulnerable. Make sure you've got friends, make sure you are aware of your surroundings. Be very careful, because you can be shot very easily, you little thief. Peter is also looking into the lifetime of constructed objects and the intentional server hopping into the base, which is very tricky to figure out, but they are looking into it. And finally this week, map designer Adam, talking about the map, its updated features to coincide with the new changes to Chernerus Plus, and the map feature at its core works the same way as it did in Armour, which means any community map, at least that is packed using the upcoming DAISY tools, is also supported, and only minor additions in the config and script have to be done. And those wondering, yes, you will be able to add notes, markers to individual map items. Peter will explain this in more detail in a future status report. Also, if you haven't seen it, the map has an animation when bringing it out to identify what a player is doing visually. It looks really nice, and you may have seen it in a previous video of mine. If not, you can see on the picture on screen now. And that is all for this week's status report highlight for the 23rd of October, 2018. Not the best status report we'd have all hoped for. No content has been cut completely. It is all coming to DayZ, just post 1.0. Yes, we didn't want to hear that, but that's the way it's going to be, it looks like. Hopefully things can change, improve and become quicker, iterated into the game. We will have to wait and see and fingers crossed. Leave a like. Let's talk about this in the comment section below. Don't forget to read the status report in full for all the information that it holds. And don't forget to check out the community spotlight, which is now a separate page. I will leave links in the description below and I'll see you peeps next time.